I'm sat here having played a lot of Football Manager today at midnight and I've decided we're doing a triple header. It's going to be a late night for me. Let's hope I don't wake the neighbours today. Manchester United, Chelsea, Man City. Three games that we probably need to win, but I don't expect us to win. If we come away with nine points, it'll be a miracle. Let's see how we get on, shall we? Yes, folks, how is it going? And welcome back to the Arsenal Let's Play. Today, we have played a lot of Football Manager. It is the end of November, and I was going to come back for some Champions League football. But Champions League football is something that apparently we're really good at. We have topped Group C with two games to spare. We've been on an immense run. We've played amazing, as you will see shortly. But as a result of that, we're already through to the knockouts. I don't need to worry about it today. So I thought... We'd focus on the league. And while in slightly not so positive news, we're currently fifth in the league. Today is going to be a very, very big day for us, though. We've got Manchester United, Man City and Chelsea. Teams all around us, both above and below. In an ideal world, by the end of tonight, we're in the top four. Now, of course, last time out, we lost against Tottenham. We beat LASK, and that was the start of the Champions League campaign. Since then, 11 matches played. So we're going to go through these nice and quickly with, well, a few exceptions, games that I feel like we probably should acknowledge. First and foremost, wins against Newcastle and wins against Leicester in the Carabao Cup and League were a great little start. And then to end the month of September... We got absolutely battered by Liverpool. I will say, this was one of those games where it just felt like every shot that they had kind of went into the back of their net. They scored some really nice goals, to be fair to them, with, well, 40 minutes left. They took their foot off the gas. They didn't push as hard. But when you look at the player ratings, it just wasn't a good day. And you might be sat out there thinking, Jack, why didn't you make any subs? When they scored their fourth in the 53rd minute, I went and made a coffee. So, uh, yeah, I, I just left the game running. So after a disappointing game against Liverpool, a truly epic win against Bayern Munich. The kind of game that I wish had been in a video, in all honesty. In this game, we came back from behind twice, and then Jesus scored with literally the last kick of the game. Bayern Munich had committed a load of men forward as the home team. I think they were backing themselves to get something, and then we just caught them out on the break at the death. You can see here, ball played forward. It fell to Jesus fortuitously. And at the end of a very long slog of a game, we came away with what felt like a massive win in a game where, let's be honest, we hadn't played that well. You might have also noticed Jesus actually came on off the bench in this game to get two. After the win against Bayern, we beat Watford 3-0 and then we slipped up again, this time against Fulham in the league. We've done great in the Champions League, in the Premier League. There have been games like this that we've kind of ballsed up. I will say in my defence, in this game, two sendings off for us in the first 14 minutes. We played more than half this game down to nine men. We were 3-0 down in this match and we ended up getting a point. It felt like a win. I've never celebrated a draw against Fulham so much in my life. But yeah, an absolutely crazy game this one. In the end, a good performance. You can see here, Ivan Tony, the hero, on off the bench, grabbed two. Something about me subbing on the attackers. Whoever I start up front doesn't score. When I take them off and bring on the other guy between Tony and Jesus, they just get goals for fun. Maybe I should just sub my striker after five minutes and then the player who comes on will always play well. So after that 3-3 draw, another game where we scored three goals, this time against uh, Monaco in the Champions League again. This one, a little bit of late drama. You can see they did score in extra time to make it maybe look a little bit closer. In the end, we made it through this game. You might have spotted it. I have been playing more regularly the 4-3-3 system. After just a run of hit and miss results, I've decided to go back to this shape and I'll talk more about it after the recap but it has been getting us some good results, like this one. After that Monaco win, a really disappointing result. We lost against Brighton, a bottom of the league Brighton. And I want to sit here and say we were FM'd. And to be fair, they did score one of their two shots on goal. We didn't create nearly enough in this game. I played the B team. I played a rotated side. And frankly, they let me down. And one 1-0 result led to another. This one against Manchester United in the Carabao Cup. I went back to playing the more attacking system after the, the result against Brighton. Didn't work out for us. You can see looking at the XG story here, we had chances in the second half. We had so many, but we couldn't find a breakthrough. 
Um, yeah, we're out of the Carabao Cup really early on again. Good news is, last three games, three wins in a row. Not overly convincing, but a 2-1 win against Leicester where we came back from behind was nice. Against Monaco, again, we came back from behind again to win 2-1. And most recently, a massive result against Wolves. Wolves this season are right up there challenging for the Champions League spots. In this game, we were the better team. You can see how we lined up. And in the end, it was Saka with the all-important goal in the 26th minute. Last year for us, Saka was absolutely phenomenal. This year, I mean, statistically, it's actually kind of a comparable season, but I don't feel like he's offered as much in the way of meaningful goal contributions. So for him to score in this game, get us the win against Wolves, it was a nice way to round off a run of games, which when you look at them, there's no real consistency to them. I will just insert the formation here so you can kind of see how I have been tweaking things over this run of games. Ultimately, I feel like in the Football Manager beta, things are always a little bit weird. You're trying to work out what roles work well, what players suit what roles, and I feel like there's been a little bit of that going on. I will say that with the 4-3-3, we have been seeing some good results as of late, and ultimately, in the Champions League, where we've been more consistently playing better teams, we've done okay with it. I've just got to hope that today... With three very difficult league games, it can work out for us. So just looking at the tactical system, it is a rework of the previous kind of 4-3-3 that we used last year. It's a bit more, um, I suppose, close to what we've been playing with the 4-2-3-1. We've got the advanced playmaker, but instead of playing in the middle as a centre attacking mid, they play alongside a box-to-box -box midfielder. I've been playing Kessier as an anchor man, and to be fair, defensively, we've looked rather good. And then in the, in the final third, we have Rodrigo on the left, Saka on the right, and Jesus through the middle. I feel like in a bizarre way, without having a centre attacking attacking mid there this front three are a lot more fluid there seems to be a bit more space for them to operate in and uh, well we're going to hope that that turns out to be the case here as we go into a game against Manchester United yeah a weird episode today I feel like with the three league games the Champions League games in between I'm not too worried about because we are through but in terms of our league form I want to be in the top four this year. Right now, we're not really there. This run of games could be a little bit make or break for us. In terms of the team for this first one, this is what I think currently is our best 11. Ben White has been dropped. He has not been good enough as of late. To be fair, when you look across the form of a lot of our players, it has been rather hit or miss. But I think at least with Gabriel on the whole, 6.97 rating across the season, Ben White has consistently been struggling. So with that in mind, moving to Debo over to his preferred kind of side at right centre-back. And uh, well, besides that, the personnel remains largely unchanged. Little thing to note, Zinchenko, Emil Smith-Rowe, Fabio Vieira, all wanting to start more games. Game management, rotating things around might have to shift to be my focus going into the new year. But anyway, this is the first of three matches today. Hopefully we can get off to a good start. Three wins in a row going into this. Prior to that, a real mixed bag. In terms of the system, I think it matches well against Manchester United, but I don't think we've beaten them yet in a live commentary. I feel like our record against them is not so good. If we could beat them here, there is a chance if we win 3-0, we go second in the league. Might be being a little ambitious, hoping for three. Of course, three goals to nil. That would be the dream result for us. Football very rarely works out that way. If we could just get three points in this game, I'd be happy as Larry. And well, maybe we can create something here. Saka trying to chip it over to Jesus. Um, I think that was Luke Shaw who read that and got his header on it to stop the through ball. As I said, I think there's a bit more fluidity in our team in the final third without the centre attack in mid. I'm hoping we'll see that a little bit today. I'm also hoping, as Tierney flies in with a tackle there, our discipline's going to be a little bit better, of course. We've had sendings off a plenty so far at Arsenal. The two sendings off against Fulham are the most recent ones. I don't think we've had any since. Of course, McKenney, who's just shot wide... He was sent off last episode. Hopefully, we're going to be well-behaved today. Bruno Fernandes, dangerous area, free kick whipped in, and it's a Varane back post header. Another set piece. I swear these haven't been a problem whilst you've been away, but whenever I come in, turn on the camera, our defence, they get a stage fright. They forget how to mark, and... Well, it was Eric Dyer last episode. This time, it's Raphael Varane, and I feel like within Football Manager, there's only so much you can do when it comes to set-piece defending um, as a manager. The players have to take some responsibility. I'm throwing them under the bus. It's not my fault, I swear. Ten minutes left of the half. Still only 1-0. We have not really created enough in this game, especially as the home side. I think at the break, we might have to go more attacking. We might have to revert back to our 
three, uh, four, two, three, one that we have been playing, you know, ordinarily. And uh, well, I'll tell you what, if Manchester United were to take a le further lead in this game, then I would be changing things. Right now, I don't want to overreact too much. I will say, not having nearly enough of the ball in this game. Going to just shorten the passing and lower the tempo. Try and control it a little bit more. Right now, Manchester United having 56% of the ball. They are bossing it. And Fernandez, despite the fact I've got a centre defence in mid, he is pulling all of the strings. You have been absolutely terrible. Tactically, you know what? It might be early to go back to old ways, but sometimes you've got to be a little reactionary. And I feel like in this game here... It's not worked out for us, has it? We need to get, I think, a few more men forward, maybe be a, a, a little more aggressive, I suppose, in the positions that we take up in the final third. Naturally, I think it's worth acknowledging, none of the player ratings are particularly good here. No one has shown up whatsoever, both defensively and going forward. But, well, I'll tell you what, if we could get an undeserved set-piece goal, which we're absolutely going to get... Maybe that could be something to galvanise us. They scored one at the same end last half. We've got one here. It's Gabriel, who I think might have been responsible for the poor marking of Varane for their goal. He's now got a shot at redemption. I think it was Tadebo with the initial header. Henderson makes a save, but it falls back to Gabriel from a very tight angle. He finds the bottom corner, and oh, I was about to pause and make a sub. I was about to change some stuff up with on-field personnel, but another highlight's begun right away. It'd be very on brand now, wouldn't it, if Manchester United scored immediately before I have kind of a chance to respond. I don't want to get carried away and suddenly think, oh, the tactics are working, everything's great because we've scored a set piece. At the same time, if we get another, maybe I will get a little carried away. Rodrigo cutting inside. One of the men who I think I might take off after this phase of play. Unless maybe he can do something. Tierney trying to get to the byline to maybe put in a ball. Gives it back to McKenney. He's going to turn around, floats it in. Gabriel Jesus is there for the header, but there is going to be a VAR check on this. Have we just got a quick fire double? Or am I about to well, be slightly upset about things? The goal's awarded. It's going to count. Let's have a party. Maybe I won't take off Rodrigo just yet. Or maybe I should. Really, maybe now is the time to make those changes. McKenney got a long way to go to make amends for what he did for us against Tottenham where he got sent off. That assist there, not too shabby. So we are at the hour mark in this game. I'm going to make some changes. In terms of what we're going to do, I'm going to bring in Zinchenko to try and see things out as a bit of a defensive midfielder option. Elsewhere, I am going to, I think, take off Odegaard who's not been amazing and has been struggling a little bit. And I'm also going to bring in Fabio Vieira out on the right. Do I want to take off Rodrigo for Martinelli? You know what? Four subs at once. Why not? Let's make some changes. We've not been good enough from open play. One singular chance scored and taken isn't going to change that. And whilst there is perhaps a temptation to try and just shut up shop here, as Sancho maybe has a chance... I think, honestly, in Football Manager, at least from my experience this year, when you try and defend, when you try and time waste and just kill off a game, it very, really rarely works out that way. I think our best bet in this game is to continue to play on the front foot, to continue to put Manchester United under pressure, kind of try and push for that next goal. And if we get it, suddenly we're in a really, really good spot. What I will say is Manchester United, I noticed, have changed up their shape. I believe they're playing with two centre attacking mids and a striker. And immediately from a set piece, our own goal kick, they have a chance as we struggle to play it out. You can see the system they're playing here. Do I want to be reactionary to this? You know what? I'm, I'm going to be a little bit reactionary. I'm going to move Zinchenko back and I'm going to move McKenny back. I'm going to play McKenny as a Saguno Volante and keep Zinchenko as a DM on defend. In transition, we will just look to be a tiny bit more direct, given the fact that, well, the midfield is going to be a bit more spread out. But just with the way that they're lining up, I think McKenny and Zinchenko just matching them probably is a smart move. Now this is about managing the game. I am going to just do a little bit of time wasting, but at the same time, there's still 15 minutes left here. We can't get too carried away. There's not been lots of chances in this game. It's not been a game full of quality. If we can hold on for a win here, I'll be a very happy, clappy chappy. And, uh, well, with five minutes left, could it happen? No more highlights, please, football manager. I am okay with this. They are throwing men forward, but they are not creating anything. And you know what? There's been games where we've been unlucky this year. I think we're due a little bit of luck. Are we going to get a little bit of luck? I'm looking at the timer. Nothing is happening. We're going to win 2-1. And we did not deserve that one little bit. Look at that XG story. We've, we've had two good chances taking them both, and it's a bit of a smash and grab. 
but you need some of these over the course of the season. So Martinelli did pick up a little bit of a knock. Too, not too much of a concern, though. If we just look at our upcoming schedule, we've got Bayern Munich midweek, but because we're already through in the group stage, I'm going to play a rotated 11. We're going to come back for game number two today. It's a week away. It's away against Chelsea. They're currently in sixth. With that win just there, we have now moved up to third, albeit teams behind us are yet to play. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're down one game. Two more to go. It's already late. I need to get a move on. I'm, I'm going to go play the next game and I'll see you in a mo. Okay, game two against Chelsea. Worth noting, have played Bayern Munich. Normally, this would be some kind of massive occasion, but with everything wrapped up, it wasn't exactly a classic. I played a rotated team, played the 4-3-3. Three, three. They had a man sent off having taken the lead. We got a goal back, just couldn't quite find that breakthrough. But with that result and results elsewhere, we are now guaranteed to finish top of the group. Elsewhere, Ben White, I've had to promise I'm going to sell, which you might be like, Jack, why have you promised to sell Ben White? I don't really want to sell him, but I'm a bit confused. He's unhappy about lack of first team football, right? But his agreed playing time is the same as his actual playing time. Like the amount of football he's been playing, he's been playing quite a lot. He started at seven league games this year and one off the bench. We've only played 12 league games. He's played more than half the games in the league and started them, mind you. Apparently, that's not enough. So, uh, yeah, something to monitor there. Maybe I shouldn't have dropped him for Gabriel. I say all of that, but as we go into the game against Chelsea, I have dropped him for Gabriel because I think this is just the better way to line things up. Of course, Gabriel got the first of two goals against Manchester United. Um, worth noting, one player with an injury at the moment is Ivan Tony. He's picked up, uh, and you can see here, sprained knee ligaments out for three to six weeks. Not exactly ideal, but it means his protege, his understudy, Vitor Roque, is going to come into the team. You can see here his determination is on the up. He has been benefiting from the mentoring. He's getting better. If we get desperate, he might come on off the bench today as we take on Chelsea. Now, I didn't realise this. We were the late kickoff today and games have already happened. Manchester United have just beaten Man City 2-0. Aston Villa, who in this save game have been really, really good for some reason, they've just managed to beat Liverpool at home. And as a result of that, a win here would take us, well, potentially ahead of Manchester United, certainly into the top three, and two points behind Liverpool with a game in hand. I will also say, as much as I've been a bit down in the dumps talking about our form being very hit and miss, I did get manager of the month for November, so... Uh, not everything's going that badly at the moment. Right, let's get into this game. Away from home against Chelsea, it's going to be difficult. Looking at their team, they've added Danny Olmo to their ranks. He's a very good creative player. They are playing a very similar shape and I imagine system to ourselves. I want to believe that on paper we maybe have an edge, but I will say Chelsea in real life have spent quite a lot of money. Chelsea and Football Manager are quite good. They've got Lukaku up front, who is still very good in Football Manager, mind you. It's going to be difficult to keep him quiet today. Okay, it's been a relatively quiet opening to this game. Chelsea have dominated the ball. They've not created a great deal with it, having plenty of possession, but not really in dangerous areas. And while they're going to try and look to build it out from the back, naturally, we've got to be ready to absorb some pressure, then hit them on the break. And we'll try and limit Lukaku from having chances like that. His effort crunches against the post. And uh, you know what? I'm going I'm to change things early. Right now, they are having far too much time and space on the ball. I'm going to ask the players to trigger the press more often. We're going to up our defensive line. Lukaku is not slow, but he's not the quickest player by any means. Um, obviously, we're already pressing with a really high line of engagement. I want to try and trap outside instead of inside, just to see if that can help us turn over the ball a little bit more. Since I've made the change, they've had one shot. We've had one shot. It's our only shot of the game. We've not had a shot on target it's nearly half time this has been absolutely atrocious so far i feel like we were kind of fortunate to beat manchester united surely fortune isn't going to be on our side two games in a row also what was that slide tackle by mckenny did you guys see that questionable is how i describe it they've knocked it around nicely and kai havertz has scored a really good goal that was annoyingly good wasn't it hmm i mean they are the home side i'd argue that sterling lukaku and Havertz is better than Gabriel Jesus, Rodrigo, and Saka. I I'm sure some Chelsea fans will have something to say about that. I, I say that. There's not a massive deal between it. You can let me let me know in the comments. Would you rather have Raheem Sterling, Havertz, and Lukaku, or Saka, Rodrigo, Gabriel Jesus in Football Manager, not in real life? I, uh, let's make that clear distinction now. Either way, we've not weathered the storm, and while it could get worse, Ramsdale makes not the most convincing of saves in the world, turns it around the post. 
it remains 1-0 to Chelsea here, but it could get worse. We've still got a corner to deal with. Danny Olmo is over it. The Spaniard whips it in. It's a free header for Havertz. Goes just wide. Maybe one last chance. I thought half-time was going to come to the rescue. It hasn't arrived yet. Tierney gets away. Rodrigo back into a dangerous area. Lukaku probably should have made it 2-0 there. I've told the players they're terrible. I'll hold up hands and say, this episode isn't exactly a glowing endorsement, is it, of the 4-3-3 system that I've been singing the praises of. Um, you might be able to guess the change I'm going to make here. I'm going to go back to our more offensive system. I think away from home, it's maybe a little bit more of a gamble. Rodrigo's not had a great game today. I'm going to bring in Martinelli on the right, and I'm also going to bring in, I think, uh, Vieira as well. Actually, Martinelli on the left, Vieira on the right. Gabriel is on a booking. You know what? Ben White, you've been crying away, son. I'm bringing him on at half time as well. In previous football managers, I've been accused of not making subs enough and like just leaving them till too late by the comment section. Now that I get five subs in the Premier League, I've got carried away. And I'll tell you what, I might have got very carried away if Martinelli had managed to finish that. Two minutes into the second half, it's a better start already. Martinelli one sub has had a shot that's been saved. We've now got another maybe opportunity here as Vieira is going to try and put the ball into a dangerous area. Gives it to Martinelli. Two shots for him early on in this half. It's a lively opening. But yeah, just circling back to that earlier point, I, I feel like this year I'm making more changes earlier in games. I don't know if that's just me. Are other people doing that? It's another set piece. It's another free kick to the back post. I have set up some more team training for defending set pieces. I have tried tweaking the defending of set pieces. How do you stop these free kicks that go to the back post? Every, every episode, every time I turn on the camera, we concede one. Someone teach me. I mean, they, they've scored one. Can we score one? Oh, got that's that. Aim for the back post. Apparently, that's a thing. Martinelli, Jesus. Um, it's 2 1. I feel very fortunate to have scored that goal. I'm not going to complain. It's an immediate response, and it's back to a one goal game. There's still 33 minutes left. We could still come back here. Fafana, he's gone from hero to zero, having just scored. Gifts Martinelli the goal. Jesus gets the goal, uh, and, well, it, it, it's 2 1. Fabio Vieira, corner. Whipped it on his left foot. Tadebo heads it just off the outside of the post. It's definitely livened up in this second half. Since we've gone back to our other system of the centre attacking mid, we are creating more. I'd argue we leave ourselves a little more open at the back. But right now, we have got Chelsea on the back foot. Martinelli cutting inside. He's been running the show. The ball somehow ended up at Jesus' feet inside the six-yard box again. This time, he couldn't find the back of the net. But we are having opportunities that we just did not see in the first half with the change. To Debo, free header again. Tell you what, I've got, I feel like there's another set-piece goal coming on here. Okay, there is 19 minutes left in this game. We're a goal down, but having had a pretty awful start to this game, we are looking much better in this second half. Martinelli's looked lively, lively as has Vieira, to be fair. And, uh, well, he is bringing it forward here. Given to Odegaard, who hits it just over the bar from range. 18 minutes left, a couple of subs, uh, you know, remaining if I want to use them. I'm going to make one here. I'm going to bring in Zinchenko. Did it last game and it worked out quite well. Odegaard's not had the best of matches. Going to bring in Emil Smith-Rowe. Might surprise you to see me bringing in Smith-Rowe ahead of Andreas. But I don't know, Andreas has been a little bit meh this season, I feel like, so far. He had a great year last year, the young Norwegian. He's still putting in some good performances, but he's not been the the kind of wah wah wee wah player that he was last year for us. And they've they've scored another free kick. What? Do, can someone please tell me what to do about these free kicks? I know I'm the one who's meant to offer advice to people playing Football Manager. I'm the one who plays this game for a living. I don't know what to do about this. It's happening every game. Sometimes multiple times a game. It feels like it's free one Chelsea. I want to cry. With five minutes left, got to go for it. Going for the 4-2-4. Let's try and get a goal or two back. I tell you what, there's instantly a highlight. The game knows how to give me some hope. Of course, as we commit more men to the attack, we are going to leave ourselves more open. But with two strikers side by side, maybe we can find a breakthrough. Not with balls like that from Tomiyasu, who I have noticed is on a booking. It'd be very on brand, wouldn't it, for this highlight to be us getting a red card, really. Or just watching Kai Havertz score again we're not watching the replay of that i'm hitting the skip button what was that it's 4-1 this is this game's done get me to man city i've got man city next i'll level with you not the ideal result but i feel like on the whole we played quite well in that second half we were dominant i think against man city i'm going back to the 4-2-3-1 
I feel like I don't know what our best formation is at the moment. I'm like Gareth Southgate going to the World Cup. Maybe that's why I'm wearing an England shirt. Oh, okay, well, look, we've won one. We've lost one. Man City up next. If we win it, we're in a great spot. If we don't win it, uh, it's not ideal. Um, let's hope that we can do better than we've done here. Okay, game number three today. Taking on a Man City team who are in fourth. They've been... Well, quite a good team over the first few years of this save game, but they are without one of their main men. Rafa Leal, eight goals in nine, currently out injured. Um, that's some good news. Less good news, Erlen Haaland is perfectly fit and he hasn't scored very many this year. So he's probably overdue to get a hat-trick or maybe a double hat-trick against us today. The Champions League group stage has concluded. We played that final game against LASK. We ended up winning it 2-1. A good result. Maybe not a great result, um, you can see here. Six points clear of Monaco. Kind of surprising to see Bayern Munich not making it into the knockout stages. But that said, Monaco were very, very good. Um, they obviously beat Bayern Munich when they met. And, uh, well, ultimately for us, it's a flawless Champions League uh, run. And because we wrap things up earlier, it has just allowed me to have this little focus on this run of games here that, uh, well, I'm hoping is going to come to a head we're winning this one against Man City. So we're not quite at the halfway point in the season, but what I will say is after this Man City game, I look at our run of games and I sit here thinking, at least maybe for the next two months, these are games that we should be winning. This is a run of form where there should be lots of green. I think over the last few months, there maybe wouldn't have been quite so much green, but my confidence is growing in everything that we're doing. Obviously, we have just been battered 4-1, so we've got to try and bounce back here. And, uh, well, speaking of which, I've just remembered, I don't want to play this formation today. Yep, that's right. For Man City away, I'm going to go with the 4-2-3-1. I feel like in this episode, the 4-3-3 hasn't worked as well as I was hoping it would. In general, that's been a system that I think has shone better against lesser teams. It kind of limits our opportunity to get hit on the break. But actually, when it comes to trying to win the ball back, especially in games against better teams who hold on to the ball more, it's not quite been as effective. So as a result of that, that is the change that we're doing. We're going to go with the 4-2-3-1. It's a full strength 11. No nonsense. No rotation. Ivan Tony, the only man out. And uh, Ben White on the bench. Still still crying on the bench, mind you. Uh, there is some interest in him, including from Manchester United. Can you imagine if I sold him to Manchester United? I normally say this at the end of the video, but if you're watching the video, if you've got to this point, I'm sat here recording at 1am, hit a like on the video, show some appreciation for this episode, and the fact that by some Christmas miracle, it'll be up for your lunch break, I hope. If I miss the upload slot and this video is up late or a day late, that's going to be awkward, but I'm sure that won't happen. Just like I'm sure Odegaard is going to score this, Edison parries it. I wasn't actually thinking he was going to score. Are we going to... We're going to score anyway. It's another set-piece goal. It's a scrappy free kick. It took three attempts for the ball to end up in the back of the net. I don't care. We have an early lead against Man City away. Edison's initial save, not the most convincing in terms of animation. Tadebo shot from, him in, from an impossible angle. Edison made quite a good stop, but it fell straight to Jesus, who against his former club, scores for us. Only 10 minutes into this game, despite not having nearly as much of the ball as Man City, we've created a lot more in terms of shots. Of course, a lot of those shots in that last highlight. But I do feel like, so far, so good. We're definitely on top in this game. Manchester uh, City, with well, you can see here, zero shots on target halfway through the first half. I would have taken that going into this game. But you look at the likes of Haaland, Grealish, Foden, De Bruyne. They've got a hell of a lot of creativity in their team, haven't they? And when I've spoken about their creativity, of course, it'd be kind of on brand, wouldn't it, if we were to now concede a set piece. That said, we've dealt with it initially. Odegaard holding up the ball a little, gives it to Gabriel, who switches it really nicely to Saka. Ben White could never. Saka holding up the ball, looks to switch it himself and try and pick out Rodrigo, who he will do so. 17 finishing, and it's all on display right there. What a lovely finish. It's 2-0, an incisive breakaway. It was switched from left to right, back over to the left-hand side. I felt like as Rodrigo bared down on goal, he wasn't really running at a good angle. You know, he wasn't really creating a good angle for the shot. But somehow, some way, from a well, difficult, acute position, he's found the bottom corner, in off the post. It's 2-0 here against Man City. Maybe I should just play the 4-2-3-1 all the time. Not long left of the half. Man City have not had a shot on target yet in this game. We have been pretty dominant. Why did I say anything? We've got another set piece. I mean, we scored from the last set piece of theirs. Could we do it? Again, Tadebo heads it away. Only as far as Phil Foden. He's now over it. Cuts inside. 
and Haaland has scored a header. Is he offside? Please tell me he's offside. I want to believe he might be offside, but he's stolen the football. He's confident he's on. I'm not going to doubt him. All the players look quite dejected. And, uh, well, Erling Haaland has scored against us. Not quite how I imagined he might score against us. It was a Phil Foden shot that I think hit the post. And then it just kind of hit him on the forehead. Who did he jump over there? Was it Tommy Yasu he bullied? Are you okay, Tommy Yasu? That was mean. Also, why are we, why are we being shown goal line technology? Answers on a postcard, I don't know. Half time here, 2-1 to the good. Not been a load of chances either way. I think we've had the better chances on the whole. Man City definitely grew into that game, but we are still in a very good position. Somewhat concerned about complacency. So I'm going to try and rile up the players a little bit. Rodrigo appears unsure. He'll be okay. Felt he get, gets along well with the manager. Well, that's uh, look, we get along well. I don't know what relevance that has now. Why is this ready? We get on well. He'll be okay, Rodrigo. Don't cry. I'll tell you what, if we could hold on for even a draw in this game, considering this is three matches from hell this episode, I feel like I'd be quite happy with things. So far in this half, Man City not creating too much. They've brought on John Stones. I noticed as well, Gundogan's come into the team. Alvarez as well has uh, made his way in. I suppose we should be thinking about making some subs of our own. I'm going to take off Tierney for Zinchenko. Odegaard's not had a good game again. I'm going to bring in Andreas, I think, through the middle. Elsewhere, McKenney hasn't played bad. He's not played great either. I'm going to bring in Andre Santos. I'm going to keep Kessier in the team. I feel like with ball-winning midfielders, they just never get good ratings in Football Manager. Kind of just defensive midfielders in general. They're always done dirty by how the match engine kind of calculates ratings. Anyway, we've got a set piece to deal with here. Ball towards Ruben Diaz's head. It's headed well, away well, but well, not away from Erlin Haaland's head just yet. Plenty of men in the attack for Man City. Oh, my word. I thought that was going to go in. Kyle Walker. I don't know if that was a shot or a pass. What I do know is Ramsdale managed to get behind it and eventually keep it safe. Why is Erlin Haaland staring down Ramsdale? That's just not cricket. Ball's played forward. Headed away. Is there more to this highlight? Man City have already had one chance. Are they about to have another? Carl Walker to Alvarez. Plenty of men in this attack for them. Gundogan to the byline. And Kess why did I not take Kessie off? Why did I not take him off? He's just committed a foul. I can't believe it. Every 50-50 decision I've had as of late, I feel like in this save game, I've made the wrong call. Oh my word, I can't believe it. Erlen Haaland with a chance from the penalty spot to make it 2-2. Ramsdale's not saved a penalty that I can remember. Could he save one here? No. Okay, there's 13 minutes left. I feel like I have to make a decision. Do I want to keep Kese on? And the, uh, the answer is absolutely not. I'm taking him off. Um, elsewhere, do I really want to go for this game? Do I want to go on the attack? I could go to our more defensive shape, but I feel like we could just be inviting a little bit of pressure on us. And with the current personnel I've got on, I've not really got the players to actually pull that system off, even if I wanted to. I think we are going to stick with a 4-2-3-1 here. Um, Vieira not playing in an ideal role, but just the best option I have at centre mid. You know what? I'm just going to make a straight swap. We're going to remove Kessier. That is the only change I'm going to make. They've got a set piece. Why? De Bruyne, he's over it. He's hitting it. It's headed away from danger, but not completely away from danger. They're coming in again. No one fouling, please. Ramsdale makes a save. Ten minutes left. We are holding on. It might be defeatist. I'm going to just... We're going to start to time waste a little. Going to try and hit them on the break as well. Bit more direct. If we win the ball, get it forward that little bit quicker. Man City have been all over us in the second half. Granted, it is Man City away from home. You expect them to have this kind of game all the way through, but we've weathered it okay, at least for now. With three minutes left, I think a draw, I'd probably take. If we could somehow snatch a win, I, I, it'd be very good. Zinchenko, could you make it happen for us? Former Man City man. If there's scripting in this game, surely he's the man who's going to score. He switches it to Tommy Yasu. The right back's going on a wander. And just for a second, just for one moment, I thought he was going to do it. He's just gone over, though. I think that Tommy Yasu effort might have been the last chance in this game. There are seconds remaining. It's going to finish here. It is going to finish here, 2-2. Bit disappointing on the whole. Man City definitely grew into the game. When we made some changes, actually, after they got their second, we did play that little bit better. Maybe Kessier was the problem. 
When I look at this league table, whilst it's disappointing to be in sixth place, we are only one point behind Man City. We are level with Chelsea. Wolves are in the top four currently in third place all of a sudden. And actually, the team who are top are only seven points ahead of us and have played a game more. And given our upcoming games, given the fact that we have now just about played all the teams around us, I want to believe that we're going to kick on. And when I come back, we might be back in the top four. In terms of when we're going to be back next time, I'm not entirely sure just yet. I feel like we've got a run of games that should be rather winnable, and depending on how they go, it's probably going to shape my decision-making. So rather than commit to something and then it just be wrong, I'm just going to say, I don't know, we'll be back sometime soon. Hopefully you have enjoyed today's episode. Hopefully I've been able to get it out on time despite me recording it really, really late, given the fact I committed to pay playing through two and a half months in a 24-hour period. Um, I've only been able to sit down now to record things, but nevertheless, a fun triple header I think on the whole if you told me I'd get four points from the three games I probably would have taken that appreciate the love and support as always we will be back tomorrow for more and until then take it easy it's me Jack and I'll see you next time I'm out